Jenny Mac with your daily comedy news. President Biden celebrated his birthday over the weekend. Jimmy Kimmel said Biden kicked off his birthday weekend with a colonoscopy. Doctor said there were no traces of malarkey. Everything looked good or everything looked as good as the inside of an elderly man's butt can look. White House physician Dr. Kevin O'Connor says Joe Biden is a healthy and vigorous male. Vigorous? Why does every presidential checkup sound like a Cialis ad? I mean, we need them to run the country, not impregnate our women. Stephen Colbert, glad he's healthy, of course. Kind of hoping they'd find that he has Benjamin Button disease. He's actually getting younger every day, Colbert. Personally, I'm grateful that history was made because Joe Biden temporarily transferred power to Vice President Kamala Harris, making Harris the first woman to assume presidential power. Yes, 100 years after women got the right to vote, we finally got the first female president on a technicality. Jimmy Fallon said Biden spent his birthday in Wilmington, Delaware, and went to 5 o'clock mass. Man, does this guy know how to party or what? Even Mike Pence was like, ever heard of Chuck E. Cheese? Love it. Seth Meyers, Democrats call it a happy occasion. Republicans call it proof that inflation is out of control. (laughs) Kimmel, to give you perspective on how old that is, Bill Clinton, remember him, the guy that was president 30 years ago? He's 75. Fallon, you can tell Biden's 79 because when he blew out his candles, everybody started clapping and the lights went on and off. The Grammys have put out the nominees for... Best thing that we all know is really a TV special, but you're going to pretend it's a comedy album. Best comedy album nominees. The nominations are Lavelle Crawford for the comedy vaccine. I believe that's actually a comedy album, and that's what I'm voting for. Not that I get a vote. Chelsea Handler for HBO Max's Evolution. That's a TV special. Louis C.K. for Sincerely Louis C.K. Now, Louis released that independently, so cool. He's in, but he's also canceled. You're not winning a Grammy, Louis. They're not going to do that this year. They'd be insane to give you a Grammy. Louis Black, thanks for risking your life. That was an Amazon.com special. Sorry, Louis. Nate Bregazzi, The Greatest Average American on Netflix. That's a TV special. Kevin Hart, Zero F's Given. That's a TV special, so I'm giving it to Lavelle Crawford. Although that, too, was released on video on YouTube. But he's the most independent of the five. Congratulations, Lavelle Crawford, for winning my vote. Hey, Dave Chappelle, we never talk about him. At a Monday night screening for his documentary at Madison Square Garden, he went back to doing transphobic jokes. He had a running gag about pronouns, said the F slur, joked about claiming to identify as a woman to get a cushier prison placement, and waved off a previous declaration that he would stop making jokes about the LGBTQ plus community, saying that the rule only counts when cameras are rolling. Chappelle laughed as he acknowledged his promise to stop with that kind of material, but with the new caveat that he'd only do so if the set was being recorded, pointing out that everybody in the 20,000-person arena had their cell phones locked away in yonder pouches, which is a major pain in the neck and why I don't want to leave the house ever again. Dave said, week four of being canceled. It's crazy. He then went into a tale about how he had to take out an order of protection against a racist neighbor who had turned up at his house a few months ago. He described that his wife had gifted him a pearl-handled twenty-two caliber pistol, joking the last thing someone would say to him before he had to use the weapon would be um, the F-word slur that rhymes with maggot. And if Chappelle didn't end up going to jail for murder... To escape the roughness of prison, he would simply claim to identify as a woman. Boy, Chappelle quadrupling down on this. He continued his bit, explaining that after getting the order of protection against his neighbor, he offered to pay for his rehab or therapy because clearly the man was not mentally well. He said the payment would have to be kept a secret, otherwise other people with no health insurance would come knocking on his door looking for medical help, adding that trans people would be among those asking him to pay for their surgeries. Chappelle went on to boast that he's glad that he wasn't technically canceled, saying he was lucky that he had been surrounded by a circle of friends, later bringing out comedian Jon Stewart. Dave made a series of pronoun jokes when introducing the musician H.E.R. He quipped, it's a pronoun you don't hear much. Later on, when riffing with Jon Stewart, Dave mentioned he'd form a transgender tribute band named They. Stewart shrugged the jokes off, but added, can't stop, won't stop, and gestured towards Dave Chappelle. In related news, Tara Field, the Netflix employee at the Center of Worker-Led Protests against Dave Chappelle, Tara Field has resigned from the company. Let's head on over to Gossip Corner. From the Daily Mail, Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson were seen putting on a passionate display as their new romance heats up. The couple were spotted giggling like love-struck teenagers as they stepped out for a manic date night at fancy Italian restaurant Giorgio Baldi in Santa Monica, California. This happened Sunday night. However, it looks like Pete Davidson has a hickey. Really? I don't think I've been involved with a hickey 
in now I'm 52 now, 30 years. Pete David's a little younger than me. Today's daily comedy news is brought to you by Palace Intrigue. On Palace Intrigue, we cover the royal family, and there's always something good. Here's a story from that show, and it is comedy related. William and Kate, and Kate is just so fabulous, as we all know. They went to the Royal Variety performance last week. They watched stars, musicians, and comics, including Josh Widdicombe, Judy Love, and Alan Carr. Alan Carr said to Kate Middleton, you look absolutely beautiful. And then Alan Carr addressed William and said, sir, I'm sure you don't know who I am, but I am not hitting on your wife. Alice Intrigue, wherever you get your podcast. Speaking of podcasts, the Boston Globe wrote LOL Worthy Comedy Podcast to get you through that Thanksgiving car ride. You know, anybody that uses LOL knows comedy really well. Let's see what the Boston Globe is recommending that you listen to. Ah, oh, look, they wrote Daily Comedy News, a 10 to 20 minute, depending on how much Mulaney gossip there is, a podcast. No, they didn't mention me at all. Their list. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. I think they're biased here because this is Boston. They wrote this Brookline born comedy icon may be done with the late night scene these days, but he's still getting plenty of laughs with his hit podcast series. All right. You know about Conan. How about the Dana Gould hour? Have a laugh while taking a deep dive into the worlds of comedy, showbiz and more with the Hopedale natives, highly entertaining podcast series is Hopedale in Massachusetts. Is this whole thing loaded? While stand-up veterans like Bobcat Goldthwait often visit the show, Dana Gould's podcast has also featured interviews that veer into horror history, including discussions with cult horror director Jeff Lieberman, as well as Anne Serling, daughter of Rod Serling. I'm going to check that out. I've got my phone right here. I'm going to listen to that one. I like Dana Gould's, what's it called? Uh, Hanging with Dr. Z, where he does a late-night talk show hosted by Dr. Zayas of Planet of the Apes fame. That's fun on YouTube. Next on this list, how did this get made... We know that one, the Paul Shear movie podcast. All right, fair enough. Judge John Hodgman. I forgot that one was out there. Court is now in session. Humorist and Brookline native. Hey, this whole list is loaded. This is all Boston. I grew up in Boston. Why isn't Daily Comedy News listed? You, why, you thought I was from Queens, New York? No, Boston. John Hodgman renders his judgment over petty squabbles and trivial disputes in this hilarious podcast, which celebrated its 500th episode in January. Next up, Make My Day with Josh Gondelman. I bet we're going to learn Josh Gondelman is from Massachusetts. Most major news stories don't put a smile on Josh Gondelman's face, so he made a game show to cheer himself up. This Stoneham native, ah, I see what's going on here, and former John Oliver writer, created a podcast that attempts to put a positive spin on pop culture and politics. How about Mike Birbiglia is working it out? One guess where we're going to find out Mike Birbiglia is from. Shrewsbury native and comedy star Mike Birbiglia doesn't shy away from the rougher edges of getting a laugh in his weekly podcast, Working It Out. Each episode features a one-on-one -on -one chat with a comedian or creator as they test out original new material on the spot. How about the Monday morning podcast with Bill Burr? We know where he's from. Next up, No Fun with Jen Kirkman. I like Jen. Jen Kirkman gives fans an up-close and personal look at her life as a comedian. In between cracking jokes and telling stories about apartments in Brooklyn, hey, that's not in Boston, or is it? No, it's not. The Needham native, ah, uh, there we go, will get serious from time to time, often offering her no-nonsense breakdown of important hot-button topics in politics, comedy, and the entertainment industry. How about You Made It Weird with Pete Holmes? Let's see where he's from. The comedian and Lexington native's long-running podcast features him humorously poking and prodding comedians, authors, and other interviewees over a secret weirdness they may be hiding. I've gotten cold on the Pete Holmes podcast. I used to really like it. And it just, I don't know, it got too spiritual. It always kind of was, but I don't know. Variety has a podcast for you to listen to. This one is called Looney Tunes Presents Bugs and Daffy's Thanksgiving Road Trip. As you know, Daffy Duck grew up in Worcester. All four of the original comedy podcast series half-hour episodes have already premiered wherever you get your shows. When Bugs and Daffy are invited to the Warner Brothers lot for a big Thanksgiving feast, Daffy is determined to make ducks the official bird of Thanksgiving, and he hatches a plan to star in a big-budget holiday movie. The only problem... Daffy isn't famous enough to star in his own movie, so Bugs and Daffy embark on a cross-country road trip to try and raise Daffy's profile and turn him into the Thanksgiving duck. That sounds goofy enough worth a listen. Some other quick news. Peacock has jumped on board. I told you yesterday, We Are Lady Parts got picked up by the ITV. Well, it'll air in the States on Peacock. That's good news. Sarah Silverman is going to put on Elf Face. That's right, Sarah Silverman, who has previously... Throwing some accusations at some other performers. She has no problem with Elf Face. In the new HBO Max series Santa Inc., 
Intrepid elf Candy Smalls, played by Sarah Silverman, who is not an elf and has the gall as an actress to pretend she's an elf. That is not right. Why can't an elf play the role? Candy Smalls will do anything to be named as the first female Santa, even if she has to fight like a man to get it. Seth Rogen's in this thing. Craig Robinson, Maria Bamford, Joel Kim Booster. Santa Inc. in Elface hits HBO Max December 2nd. I've told you I was looking forward to Mo Ammer's upcoming special. Mohammed in Texas starts streaming on Netflix on November 30th. The trailer is out. Mo Gilligan has been named as the host of next year's Brit Awards. He said it's an absolute privilege to host the 2022 Brit Awards. I'm truly honest to be asked. We're already in extensive planning stages and all I can say, I promise we're going to give it all we've got to create an incredible night for music fans everywhere. The ceremony takes place at London's O2 Arena on February 8th. Andrew Schulz and his team were left scrambling to find another venue for his infamous tour. He says, Massey Hall in Toronto hit me up a few weeks ago and they said, hey, we have to cancel your shows. We looked you up and you tell inappropriate jokes. We no longer want inappropriate jokes on our stage, so we have to cancel your shows. Massey Hall did not respond to the Toronto Sun's request for comment. Meridian Hall had no issue with Schultz's comedy, so he's playing there March 4th and the 5th. Speaking of Andrew Schultz, he will be part of Untitled Comedy Feature at Netflix. Untitled Comedy Feature also stars Jonah Hill, Eddie Murphy, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and David Duchovny. That's quite the cast. The script is said to be an incisive examination of modern love and family dynamics and how clashing cultures, societal expectations, and generational differences shape and affect relationships. Jonah Hill is part of the couple trying to navigate the issues. Eddie Murphy, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and David Duchovny are parents with many sets of expectations. And from Chortle, tonight at the Comedy Store, it's the final night of the British Comedian of the Year 2021, described as the FA Cup of Comedy, because it's open to all comers, not just newcomers. That explains, says Chortle, why the final features a wealth of experienced names, Andy Askins, George Zach, Jeff Innocence, Jojo Sutherland, Lindsay Santoro, Mike Gunn, Ninia Benjamin, Scott Bennett, Stephen Grant, Callie Beaton. They're all competing for the biggest prize in comedy, 10,001 pounds. That is a quid more than the Edinburgh Comedy Award. Find out who grabs it at the Comedy Store tonight. And that is your comedy news for today. I've got episodes for you all weekend. I'll be here tomorrow. Thursday and Friday are normal. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to do something about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I think. And Sunday is a look at some comedy specials that have come out. So follow the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Good Pods, wherever you get your shows. Oh, I forgot to hit you up for a beer. It's trivia night. And Glenn and I go play trivia on Wednesdays. And I'd like to buy him five-sevenths of a beer. So what you can do is you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news and throw five bucks in the tip jar. Now, this morning, I went to the National Donuts chain. Every now and then when I order my large iced coffee with caramel and milk, they throw hot coffee over ice. And they think I don't notice. I totally notice. The ice melts and it gives you guys away and it's watered down. And it's not as good. I hate when National Donut Chain does that. Every now and then they do that and I don't know why. If I wanted hot coffee over ice, I'd buy a hot coffee and I'd come home and I'd pour it over my own ice. I want an iced coffee. If you're an iced coffee snob, you know totally what I'm talking about. So no coffee today. But I would like to buy, Glenn, five-sevenths of a beer, because beer is $7. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news, and you figured out the rest already. Okay, happy Thanksgiving. I'll be here. They're recorded. And, uh, you know, you'll see me here tomorrow. And what am I doing? I don't know. I guess I'll sleep in. Bye.